It was just freedom. As a kid, you could jump on your bike and disappear for hours. I think that feeling stays with you all your life. We started trying to put fatter tires on bikes and some different gears, and it allowed us to get out on the dirt and play a little bit farther and, and go up and down hills. That was really fun. And it's like, yeah, that's that exact feeling again as a kid. Today, fat bikes are helping to keep that pioneering spirit alive and continuing the evolution of cycling by allowing riders to venture into new terrain in riding conditions previously thought impossible. We still love riding trails, but there's something about riding on terrain you've never ridden before. Sometimes places nobody has ever ridden a bike before that's pretty special. And fat bikes are allowing people to do just that, to ride off the beaten path. A tire of a certain size got us to a level and a certain style of riding. And here is another step to go to a place where we thought, okay, you can't ride a bike there. And all it took was some creative individuals to go, you can ride there if you do this. It's another whole world that we couldn't take our bikes to before. We wanted to see where these bikes could take us. So we rounded up a mix of riders from weekend warriors, to professional endurance athlete, to professional motor trials rider, and some friends we met along the way. Everyone found their own way of taking advantage of and appreciating what these bikes allow them to do. Things they weren't able to do on their traditional mountain bikes. Oh yeah, Emmy, a chocolate lab with better endurance than any of us and better traction than even studded 4.8 inch tires comes along for more than a few rides. been on a bike all your life but now we can go do this other stuff that we couldn't before and that's that's magic it's just uh that's what we strive for if you stop doing that stuff you might as well just go lay down or something Down. Come here. You know, I got the chance to. <laughs> Come here. I've been lucky to have some great dogs over the years, but you know, I've never had a puppy before. Emmy is the first puppy I've ever had. Living here in Tahoe, I wanted her to be a Tahoe dog. I wanted a new backcountry buddy, and she became just that. Not only did I get a chance to play with Emmy and go out and have these great adventures with her, we documented most of it. She'll never know that. She'll never can watch it like I will but I'm gonna be able to go back and look at that years and years down the road. When we started this project, not a lot of my friends had fat bikes. Some of the ones that did, they had real jobs. It was just Emmy and I going out by ourselves. I set up a camera on tripod and we saw something cool. You know, we've tried to make something happen and it was an amazing bonding opportunity. Just the two of us out there, with a bike in the middle of nowhere, playing in the snow. I mean, I, I got to be a kid again, just like she was a puppy. She didn't know what we were trying to accomplish. She just wanted to play and have fun. And, but that was perfect because it allowed me to kind of remember that's what it's all about. That's what we're out there to do and to have fun. And you know, just riding these bikes in the snow and everywhere else I got a chance to ride them, that was fun. That was a blast. And getting to do it with Emmy was just that much better. and this was just the beginning. We have a lot more adventures ahead of us.
Driving solo on my way to Vegas to meet up with Pat and Liz. Just had a really fun session back at Car Hedge, Car Hedge, Stone Hedge for cars. I'm not quite sure what it was, but it was just outside of Goldfield, Nevada. There's some fun stuff there to see, but I was stoked to get on the bike and play around a little bit too. Canyon is a very cool place to ride, but you probably need to be an advanced rider to have fun there. It's a lot of rock and a lot of speed, a lot of technical. I've been to Vegas before, but mostly for uh, stadium races, so this is a whole new experience and definitely enjoying it a lot more than being uh, stuck in the city. Last out at Bootleg Canyon, finding all kinds of different terrain and styles of riding from downhill to dirt jumps. Had a great time just uh, exploring that place and riding the new bike. No time to waste. The stays are gone. What's the riding like around here? It's pretty good, it's a little soft, a lot of rocks. Otherwise, it's just pretty flowy and pretty fun. It's been a while, how you've come back in style, singing hey, na 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 na. Back on the block, really nothing but talk, singing hey, na 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 na. Come on, hey, na 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 na. to get some great riding in near Vegas. We're really close to the city, but it feels like it's out in the middle of nowhere when we get out there. I'm definitely not really a city girl, so it's fun for me to come out and see the mountains a little bit and get some fun little techie single track riding in. cool spot to come check out. Even found some trials lines and got to hop around on some rocks so it's a good day for sure. out here seems really fun but I also enjoy finding new new lines that people haven't ridden yet and yeah, coming out to the cowboy trail in late night and, and just 
finding lots of cool rocks that have tons of traction, nice and round, so the flat ones, a little bit of everything, and yeah, just having a blast uh, doing a little bit of trials. but a pretty amazing spot. We're at a Cathedral Gorge State Park in eastern Nevada, a park that I didn't even know existed two weeks ago, but we found out today it's been here for 80 years. This isn't the most direct route back to Tahoe, but it was really worth the drive, just going a little bit out of our way. It's just so beautiful. I mean, the slot canyons, uh, the fact that there's a trail here that you can ride. We just finished cruising around the Juniper Trail out here at Cathedral Gorge and it was beautiful. I was really impressed. The, the landscape is very surreal. We basically had this place to ourselves today. It wasn't on my radar screen and I'm glad that we came here. Yeah, definitely want to come back. After playing around one day on the steep but really fun dunes at Sand Mountain, we decided to check out some dunes that allowed for longer rides. After doing some research, we headed further out into Nevada to Winnemucca, and we're fortunate to meet up with Chuck Austin out there. Pretty much grew up just out in the desert with my mom and dad. My wife and I bought the bike shop about 23 years ago. Did a little mountain bike racing for a few years, and then just started doing some adventure riding. Guy stopped in the shop, and he had a fat bike. And uh, he said, where can I go ride this in the snow? And I said, man, you need to take it out to the sand dunes and check it out. Came back about five hours later and he was just psyched. And I ordered a fat bike that day for myself. And uh, we've been hitting the dunes ever since. Winnemuck is a great spot to ride. You can just take off right from your house and you're, you're on the dirt within just a few minutes and you can pick your poison north, south, west, east, and go for as long as you've got in you. My uh, family uh, ranching out here starting in the 40s. My grandfather and uncle, they uh, used to brand cows out there. There was an old cabin out, the old buckaroo shack out there. It's a pretty special deal going out there to that windmill and thinking about my grandfather and uncle running cattle, checking frozen water troughs, and now I'm paddling around on a fat bike just having a good old time. Man, after a good rain, you just don't want to miss it. It's like a powder day. Riding the dunes is just like no other. We're out there just floating through the sand. And you chug up the hills and then you try to figure out which line you're gonna take. 
nothing like it. Almost feels like you've uh, maybe ate some wrong mushrooms or something floating around out there. On the way to Vegas, I saw a moto zone that looked like it had potential for the bikes. It was less than 90 minutes from Tahoe, so it was easy to come back and check it out. The terrain, at least for our skill sets, would have been pretty challenging on a regular bike. But having tires that are about the same size as moto tires made nearly everything rideable and it turned the whole area into a playground. We had such a good time exploring the zone that we came back for another round and brought Jeff with us as this place seemed right up his alley. Anthony uh, gave me a call one day and said, you need to check out this Wilson Canyon area. It's pretty bitchin', so I believe them. We went out there and, and wow, it's kind of like terrain I've never ridden on before. It was like dunes, but they're, they're hardened and it's not like a soft sand dune and you could actually ride up and down super steep stuff. Uh, some of it was too steep to ride up and uh, pushed our way up quite a bit of it, but there's really neat spines and uh, ridge lines to ride, slot canyons, really beautiful. Lots of colors in the rocks, uh, just big country to look at, really fun zone. Diamond Peak Ski Resort, Incline Village, Nevada. We got a unique experience one day to, to get on the lifts after Diamond Peak closed, get a ride to the top. Super cool experience of being able to ride anywhere you wanted down some pretty steep hills and the views from Diamond Peak. Wow. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> really excited, thanks Good. so much. We came down Crystal Ridge, which is a blue ski run. On two wheels and on ice though, it's a little different. Maybe leaning a little bit more towards black than blue. About halfway down though, that snow softened up and it started to get fun. You could move around a bunch. And it was a lot more manageable once that, just that little softening.
first time like actually exploring a, a hillside and the snow on a fat bike. And uh, you know, the snow is, I don't ski or snowboard, so I don't I don't know, you know, where the ice is or the slush is or how it reacts. So figuring it out on a bike is, is a little tough, but, uh, but it's fun, it's something different and it mixes it up. Finding that new thing out there is always amazing weather, you know. For me, first it was out on backpacking trips, and then with the bike, it got me farther, and, you know, new places that I could never get on foot, just time-wise, and then with the fat bike, it opened that up to not only just different distances, but new terrains. Out in the wintertime, across glaciers, the possibilities are endless of where you can go with these things. Brown. 